And so the revival has to start in us. How do we be the church? That's how. It starts with us. It starts with our own personal walk. It starts with how we, we fast, how we pray, how we really care about what's going on in our own heart. Yes, sir. And what we care about what's going on in the world. Yes, sir. Because this world is dying. Just like you said, there's young people that's dying. There's young people that's dying. There's young people that don't even care about their own lives. Getting in random shootouts for no reason. No reason. And don't care. And don't care. And think that their lives are worthless. No, you have a life. You, your life is so worth it to God. Our YouTube page has like, I don't say it's like skyrocketed to mm -hmm. like another realm, but we've, we just hit like 400 subscribers. Oh, wow. So thank God for the 400. What's up? That's what's um, up. But it's funny because it's like every time I post like a short or something, mm -hmm. um, it like it attracts like atheists and agnostics. Mm. And it's so funny because it's like they'll say something dumb and stupid. I mean, they'll troll it and I'll troll it back because mm -hmm. I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just you, when you said that, it made me think about that because it's like for some reason, it's like there's such a lack of reverence and a lack of honor and a lack of really a disrespect to God mm -hmm. because of the fact that, you know, we're Christians. We love the Lord. We're just trying to save people. Right. And at the same time, the enemy is going to do his thing right. to try to distract that and try to thwart that. Right. And I think that we have to stay focused, just Absolutely. like you were saying. We have to be mindful of what's, t what's taking place. But it's like the post I, I had made earlier, and it pissed somebody off on social media, which I don't really care. It's like we can't get caught up in these conversations and in these things with people that God has already rejected. Like, mm. I'm not going to waste my time, mm. you know, going back and forth with people that are of a reprobate mind because God already turned his back on them, and he's already tried. Mm. He knows their heart. It was like, so I'm going to focus and shift my focus to only going towards and going after the lost, going after the lost sheep. Going after that one person that was saved, but, you know, they maybe have some questions and things like that. But, you know, they were hurt and different things like that. And they just shifted and pivoted. Right. It's like, that's what we're going after. And we're right. going after the, the ones in the world who really need God. Right. Who are really hungry and, and desiring an authentic God experience. Right. It's like, even with our night of worship, like, that was the whole intent. Right. It, it was... We want people to walk away and say, oh, I experienced God. Right. Like, I met God here. Because right. that's what it's all about. Right. It's like, it's about creating environments where people can encounter God. Right. Whether it's on our podcast, whether it's in the night of worships, whether it's on, like, prayer meetings or whatever we do. It's, it's all intent for people to encounter God. It's all intent for people to understand that. The, the times that we're living in and we're creating a space for them to be able to come and, and, and commune with God and also fellowship and be amongst like-minded um, believers. But at the same time, it's like, you know, we just have to be ready. So absolutely. And even going deeper than that, um, it's what is God saying? For right. Me? Right. Yeah. You know, because here's the thing. There is a, oh, here we go. People, <laughs> there are people who are in need of, they're looking for hope. Yeah. They're looking for direction. Yeah. And those who have made up in their mind that there is no God because they have a problem. Watch this. They mm -hmm. have a problem with the freedom of choice mm -hmm. because their question is why, well, why, there, why is there evil in the world? Yeah. You know, that's something that's common with the, um, the atheist, atheistic view. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is if God stepped in every time there was evil happening, then that would take away our choice. Right. So we have to make up our mind on what it is that we want. You have to have an open mind yeah. and it can't be based off of an experience right it can't be based off of what has happened in your life yeah um that pushes you away because here's the thing and i had to tell somebody recently this mm -hmm. i said you have th they had a problem trusting i said the reason why you have a problem trusting in god is because you keep comparing god to man come on that's facts you keep putting god where man is man is is we're the bride. Mm -hmm. The church is the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. There are things that, you know, are going to happen. People are going to continue to be people, mm -hmm. but you can never, the only way that you understand who God is, is if in turn you, you're going to have to, and let's backtrack for a minute. When, when you look at 
when Jesus asked the disciples, he says, who do men say that I am? Mm-hmm. Right? Right. Everybody, he says, some say you are this, you that, and all that good mm-hmm. stuff. And Peter, we know the story. Peter yep. talks about, Peter says, thou art the Christ. Mm-hmm. And I, I want y'all to pay attention to what Jesus did all at the same time. Yeah. He says, upon, he says, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'm going to build my church. Yeah. So what did he do, really? Mm-hmm. What Peter did, I mean, what Jesus did was, not only did he establish the church in that moment, yeah. but he affirmed who Peter was. It, yeah. was. Mm-hmm. And because he affirmed him, that's what, the more you believe in who Christ is, or the more you go after him, there is a belief not only in him, but in yourself. There is an affirmation that happens within yeah. yourself. So then you'll understand that experience that has happened in a different type of way. Yeah. Because there are things and situations that, that just happened that was close to me. A friend of mine lost their best friend out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And how do you explain that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they wasn't uh, older. They were a young person. Yeah. This is a young person. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do. And and see, the problem was they were in church at the time, so they're beating themselves up. But I asked the question, I said, where else would you would rather have been? Right, right. Because there was nothing you can do at that time. And what the enemy does, and for those who are struggling in believing in who God is or who had that experience that uh, has taken you away from God, that, sa- that you said there is no God, we, all, we already know, and you know, and it's just common sense, there Everything that's created had to come from something. Some from something. And it won't no gases. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> there is that you can't just create something from nothing. Right. So if that's the fact, then let's look deeper into what it is. There is something in your heart that you need to search. With that being said, now when you learn the sovereignty of God mm-hmm. and know that he does all things well and those who believe we live to live again. Mm-hmm then you will understand certain things happens and that is out of your control. Out of, way out of your control. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, I think um, with that being said, you know, this is why we as the church, we have to be prepared because I don't know if anyone's noticing, but how they're slowly but surely trying to change the laws. Yeah. If you look at things, now I just want y'all to think about something. You can probably pull this up. Mm. On when we had our day of Easter, mm-hmm. our day of celebrating our Savior, mm-hmm. our president who was in the office mm-hmm. decided to make that particular day mm-hmm. trans day. Mm-hmm. This particular day, I'm, I'm going to ruffle a, p- a few people's feathers, but I don't care either. I'm just, right. I'm with you. Okay. Right, right. I'm talking to you right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. All of a sudden now you're going to change. You you want to make this particular day out of all days. Yeah. You could have did the day before. You could have did the day after, even though, I mean, because it, it, it doesn't make sense yeah. to me unless the spirit of the Antichrist is already working his way in this world. Mm-hmm. It's already here. It's already here. We're not waiting on it. Oh, no. The spirit of the Antichrist is already here. We're, 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 it's already here. And because it's already here, now you have little things and little laws. And here's my, my fear, and then I'm going to pass it to you. Are you good? My, not my, my fear, but my concern with the body of Christ is when I read Revelations 13 and 9, mm. or 13 and 10, bro. And I saw something, and it, made, it checked me because I'm guilty as well. Mm-hmm. But I saw something in Revelations 13. Where that? All right. It says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. And then he says something. John says, here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Yeah. Let me break it down. Because what we're not realizing is, you ever hear people say, well, God is building my faith. Mm-hmm. He's building my patience. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we're thinking it's to go to another level tangibly. Yeah. Or to go to a different type of position. Yeah. No, he's building our faith and our patience because there's coming a time mm-hmm. where we're going to have to stand up 
for what we believe in because we ain't we ain't going to be able to buy certain things in certain yeah. places. We ain't going to be. So what does that mean? We have to be equipped in every area of our lives. Yeah. We can't just be equipped um, um, spiritually. We got to have farms. Yeah. We got to have places where people can come and buy and still use without having to have the mark of the beast. Yeah. These are the things that we're going to have to endure. The Bible says we're going to have to endure these things. Yeah. We can't avoid it. Yeah. And the problem is we're so busy in the church. And this is, again, <laughs> we're so busy in the church trying to feel good because things does happen and I get life happens. We have to get back to the basics of what the church is. Yeah. The church is we we're having this meeting to see what God is saying. Yeah. What is he saying? What do we need to do? Yeah. How do we need to move yeah. as a people? Because if we're operating like we're up op and like they did in the book of Acts, when we're helping one another mm -hmm. and building one another, mm -hmm. we'll never be without. We'll mm -hmm. be prepared for those times that are coming and there will be no lost sheep. Right. Instead of we, there is we cannot. And what I'm understanding is. When we preach the word or proclaim the gospel, it's really not about the style. It's so much about the substance. Yeah, it's really about the substance. We right. need substance yeah. because our generation, I, I can I, I understand that we have this thing where we just have to have an understanding. Yeah. Of why this has to you can't just tell us nothing. Yeah. And you can you can't just tell us you gotta do this, this, and this. Right. Because it's not going to bring about a level of conviction. There, there has to be an understanding. There has to be a substance. There has to be the Holy Ghost has to be in your word. So that way we are able to tap in in a different type of way. Because I told my barber this. I told my barber this. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I told him, I said, I said, it's just like, because he was talking about Noah. I said, this is what. The last times in the Bible says this is yeah. how the last times was going to be. Yeah. I said, we're going to have this big old ship. Mm -hmm. Everybody's invited. Mm -hmm. Here we go with that word ship again. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Brought it back. Yeah. That's a good recall. <laughs> <laughs> but that we it's like a big ship that everybody is invited to. Yeah. And we're saying, listen, the rain is coming. Yeah. The yep. rain is coming. Yep. The signs are there. It's Our written on the wall. Mm -hmm. And if in turn we don't wake up as the body, mm -hmm. then we're going to miss out on something. We're, 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 we're going to miss out on something that God has promised us. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up the, the transgender thing. Because, <laughs> no, for I, I'm really happy because so, and this literally just happened like last night and it, it was pissing me off so much because so there's this post on on on, on YouTube. Um, there's this one particular channel. I'm big on creating spaces, creating mm -hmm. environments for people to comment and talk and whatever and all this jazz and whatnot. I don't I don't care if it gets if it gets heated, it gets whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all find common ground, whatever. That's that. But if your your platform, and I'm kind of taking a little bit of a pivot, but I'm, it's going to make sense. Sure. If your platform is about creating conversations, then you have to be open and welcoming to all conversations, right. not just shutting down right. one particular person. So there's this post. This guy he's preaching about he's preaching against Trump, pretty much. Mm -hmm. He's preaching against Trump, and he's talking about and he's hooping and hollering. That's why I, I like what you said about the substance. We care more about substance now, and that's one thing I can honestly say about this generation. Mm -hmm. We're hungry for substance. We're yeah. hungry for truth. We don't want no hypocritical stuff. Right. We don't want no fake stuff. Right. We want the we want the fullness of truth. We Absolutely. want the real thing. Absolutely. The full truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God. Absolutely. That's what we want. Absolutely. And if you're not living in that way, guess what? We're gonna see that. Absolutely. Our, I, I would say this this generation's discernment meter is probably more on high alert than any other generation mm -hmm. in the world mm -hmm. because of the fact that we know, oh. Something ain't right with that. Mm. The signs are already there. Like, oh, that person needs help. But anyway, back to the point. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, it's like, it was his comment, and he said that this guy is hooping about Trump. Meanwhile, Biden declared Easter Sunday trans transgender day of visibility. Which mm -hmm. It's messed up. Yes, he shouldn't have done that. Uh, he could have picked any other day in the world. Mm -hmm. And so, but the thing, the truth is, and I looked it up because my cousin had brought it up to my attention. And he was like, 
you know, this has been around since 2009. And I was like, oh, wow. Really? So the thing is, is that, and I Googled it, and it says the Transgender Day of Visibility started in 2009 by trans activist Rachel Crandall Crocker as a day to celebrate and raise awareness of transgender people. And the event has always fallen on March 31st. And I find that interesting because it's like, and it's not to, you know, shut down anything you just said, because I agree wholeheartedly Mm -hmm. uh, with you on that, because he could have for the past, what, three or four years of his, of his uh, Mm -hmm. camp, of his, um, his uh, presidency. presidency, Mm -hmm. He's never made this big move to do that. Mm. Like, Nobody was thinking about it on March 31st. Mm. Nobody else in the world. You have, if, if there's old news clippings and stuff of, of things of people highlighting that right, right, prior right. to this year, I get it. You know mm. what? This year it was such a big deal because out of, out of the blue, right. Biden signs this executive order, you know, pretty much stamping it and putting it in the history. And it's like, but well, why would you do that? Right. But the thing is, it's like, and it goes to your point. It's been around since 2009. Mm. Like, this spirit, this spirit of the Antichrist has been in the land for a very long time. Yes, sir. These laws and these things have been changing for a very long time. Yes, sir. We can't just be sh- asleep at the wheel right. <laughs> and uncognizant of what's going on because of the fact that we so, oh, yeah, I'm really about to piss some people off. Because we're really so into the whole going to church and all these different things, the hooping and hollering, the shouting and all this other stuff. No, we need substance. We need truth. We need to know, like the Bible says, my people perish for what? A lack of knowledge. Yes, sir. And it's not just knowledge in this because people don't like to read this, but it's lack of knowledge of what's going on in the world. Yes, sir. As far as like what laws are being tra- or what laws are being passed, what things are going on, not paying attention to what's happening outside of the four walls of the church, mm-hmm. not paying attention to what's happening to outside of your workplace, outside of school, wherever you're at, or even outside of the four walls of your home. It's a lot that's going on. You have to be knowledgeable of these things and you have to know. And not only that, but your faith has to be secured in this. Yes, sir. And I find it so funny because it's like, so I literally just did a Bible study on this and I was telling my people, it was like Christians and we're, so our topic today, let me, let me just hit on this. Our topic <laughs> really quick. Our topic is we're talking about the revival. Yes, sir. There's a revival in the land. It's a spirit of revival. It's, it's happening all over the land. And it's so funny because like, I literally just taught a Bible study on God, on Jesus being Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. Jesus and God the same. Y'all read your Bibles. But, (laughs) but, um, and I just did this teaching and I, and, and the word of God had led me in this was so profound. And you just, you just mentioned how you've been off social media for a while. Yeah. Um, which I honestly I, I I I do little breaks and stuff like that every now and then too because social media is a, it's a it's a wild place. Yes, sir. So the Lord was showing me. He was like, if 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 I am Alpha and Omega in your life, then why aren't you putting me first in every area of your life? And we talk about God being Alpha and Omega in certain areas of our lives. We say He's God first. He's God first. Do you really consult God on every single matter? Do you really? Consult God for every single question that you have. It's like, and I was like, well, that's kind of tedious. No, it's it's true. Like, if 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 God is really first, like Matthew six and thirty three says, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Then you're seeking God first on all of these things, mm-hmm. not just on the the stuff that you got a job opportunity. I'm gonna seek God for this. No. Seek God for that, but also seek God for what am I going to eat today? Right. <laughs> what am I going right. to do there? Right. Like, what am I going to do there? Like, should I take this route? Should right. I take that route? To work? No, seek God for everything. Yes, sir. Because he is our, what? God is like, what the Bible says, he's a light unto our, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And if he's that, then we have to live according to that. So I had, I had did the, the teaching and the Lord was showing me that, but he was also showing me how, and going back to the Bible thing, and I'm really going to harp on this because people really need to read their Bibles and stop misquoting and mistaking things out of out of context. But when was the? I'm going to ask you this question: When was the first time that you like you read through the Bible cover to cover? The first time, actually, and honestly, 2020 when the COVID. <laughs> same here. Same here. <laughs> COVID happened. <laughs> And life 
just was like, you know what? Let me try <laughs> Let to me do get this. this word. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah Cause I'm with you because it's funny. I I literally shared that on uh, another episode. Um, how you know a few years ago was the first time I did cover to cover, read the Bible in, in, in entirely cover to cover. And I talked about how the thing that stood out to me the most was wasn't God, but it was the spirit of uh, where the uh, the enemy <laughs> and his deceptive nature and all that stuff that stood out to me. But it was like people don't realize how much truth and how much fact is in this book. We would rather go to social media for all these different things. We would at, we would rather put our attention on all these different things, all of our, we get our research and our, and our, our knowledge from, and I, I know I just quoted Google, but you know, we go to Google, we go to all these different things. You can go to the Bible for a lot of this stuff. It, the, the Lord of God, the, his word will tell you straight up what's about to happen. Mm-hmm. But so there's 24 hours in a day. Mm-hmm. There's so many, we have so many excuses why we can't read this. Mm-hmm. Like, Oh, I just can't find the time. You know, the kids got soccer you know, I got to take the kids to school. And then as soon as they get out of school, we got to go do this. We got to do that. And then we got to cook dinner. And then by that time, I'm just, whew, I'm, I'm pooped. I'm wired. I'm, t- I'm tired. I just, just don't have time. It was like, or, you know, even, you know, or I just, you know, I'd be so tired when I get home. And then I get up, get up super early. And then all this, it's, we have so many different excuses for why we can't get into, into this book. There's 24 hours in a day. And I was looking at this research. And it says that the average American spends four and a half hours per day on their phone. Half of that, two and a half hours and 23 minutes is spent on social media platforms per day. So, wow. and this is the thing. We want to talk about tithing. We want to talk about the principle of tithing. Do you tithe your day to God? Correct. Do you give God your 10%? Two hours and 20 tw- minutes. That's 24 hours in a day. God just wants 24 minutes. Mm. 24 minutes you can you 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 can find 24 minutes in that four and a half hours that you spend on your day on your phone you can find 24 minutes in the two and a half hours that you spend on social media and this, and this is the thing that's going to mind this is the thing that's really going to mind like blow your mind the average person with the average reading speed would be able to read the entire bible in 74 hours and 28 minutes oh, wow. that is about three days that's about three days with an average reading speed. But I'm if that's like, that. huh? <laughs> I'm going to try. Right, right. I'm but that's like, this is, I just like sitting down and just reading averagely and just average that. reading for three days straight. You can do it. And the thing is, it's like, and this is another fact. This is another fact. It's going to blow your mind. If you were just to spend 12 minutes a day just reading your Bible averagely, mm-hmm. you could read the whole Bible in a year. Mm-hmm. Just 12 minutes. We just talked about the principle of tithing, tithing your day. What's, you, what's half of 24? 12 minutes. What you're saying takes commitment. It takes being intentional. Mm-hmm. It takes focus. Mm-hmm. And this is what people don't have and then are mad at God. At God. Mad at their results because they don't put the time in. Mm-hmm. You reap right. what, what you, you sow. sow. Come on. So if in turn you you're reaping what you sow, uh, uh, what are you sowing? Yeah, what are you sowing? Because you can't expect something from nothing. It's just like, and I uh, I'm mm. gonna say it how I want to say it. Say it. it. It's just like people who think that the world was created <laughs> out of nothing. Come on, something had to come from it. Mm-hmm. And as powerful as God, he spoke everything is because he saw. He put mm-hmm. the work in. Mm-hmm. Six days and then he rested. Mm-hmm. So if in turn, because going back to what you said, we don't ask God what we need to do. And here's the interesting thing. Jesus made the statement. He says, I'm going to go to the Father, but I'm sending the comfort. Come on. <laughs> so you have him on the inside, inside. of you. Uh-huh. There is no extra work that you have to do. All you got to do is simply say, Lord, what is it that you need me to do today? Mm -hmm. How is it that you need me to walk? Because in order for there to be a revival in the world, I have to have a revival within my life. Come on. Come on, Marcus. Come on, Marcus. I have to have the, the revival has to start with me. Yeah. That's why. Uh, um, the Bible also says if we suffer with him, we'll reign with, with him. him. Come on. 
there is there is going to be there is a level of persecution within the revival. There are things, there are afflictions that are going to happen within life. But if in turn we are committed to getting to know the Father who dwells on the inside of us, mm-hmm. because the three are one. Yeah, they are. And, and we have the advantage because all you have to do is simply believe. Mm-hmm. And if you believe he's right there, right next to you, everywhere you go and everything you do, but you got to trust. You got to trust it. You got to trust him and you got to lean not into your own understanding. Mm-hmm. You got to, you got to put him because hearing those statistics is, it, it tells me somebody took the time out. To, to break it. to break it down mm-hmm. to say, okay, this is all it takes. So God is not asking for much. He's not asking for he much. He never asks for much. Come because on. what can you give a God mm. that created everything, mm. the heavens and the earth? What can you give a God that yeah. created you, yeah. the sun, the moon, the stars? What can you give a God? All He wants is your worship. Yeah, your worship is your lifestyle. Yeah. And how you live and how you go after him. Yeah. Your, your worship is deciding to, ch- ooh, to choose him. Yeah. That is your worship. Yeah. That's how you worship him. And it's not just going to a church and lifting up the hand. Come because on. we are the church. We are the church. We're we are stones. the church. We are so the church. if we are the church, then how are we living? Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. Every time people hear that, they get offended because they feel like they got to put things down. Mm-hmm. But he's not asking you Come to. Come on. Nope, he's not. He's not Come asking on. you to change certain things because the Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of you, the one that you believe in, is going to begin to change you. So yep. All of a sudden, your taste is going to be like, I don't want to do that no yep. more. Yeah, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It, 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 and it's, it's very funny. Even if you're not a believer right now, you can uh, attest to this. When you were younger, there were things you ate that you don't eat now. Mm-hmm. Or vice versa. Mm-hmm. There are th- your, your appetite changes. changes. It shifts. So if your appetite changes, I want to challenge you just to give God a chance. Yes. Just to give him a chance. No, a real chance. Don't look at people. Give him a chance. Mm -hmm. And allow him to lead you to the right shepherd. Yes, Lord. Allow him to lead you to the right shepherd so the right shepherd can guard your heart, can can, um, push you and direct you into into the person that you're supposed to be. Yeah. But it's going to, the work is going to have to come in 12 minutes yeah. a day. Yeah. And 20. that's just, and that's just reading. That's not reading to study. That's just reading. Just reading. That's just reading. And the thing is, it's like, I don't even, this is, this is why I troll the trolls because it's like, I don't, I don't care. Unless you have a serious question, I'll talk to you, whatever. Right. But I'll troll the trolls because the thing is, I know that you're not reading your Bible. Mm-hmm. You can be an atheist, agnostic, whatever. Most nine times out of 10, Every person that is an atheist and that's coming, they're coming at you. They have not read this entirety mm-hmm. in its entirety, mm-hmm. nor have they have studied this in its entirety. Mm-hmm. They just picked and chose certain scriptures and certain things like, oh, 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 oh my mind's, uh. <laughs> and that's and that, and here they are, atheists, boom, <laughs> right, like <laughs> right. <laughs> most of them have already been Christians. They either grew up in some different orthodox or some different denomination, mm-hmm. and something bad happened to them. Mm-hmm. And nine times out of ten, it just shifted their worldview. Mm-hmm. And now that they, oh, well, I want to do this on my own, like, bro, yeah. But you haven't invested time into this, mm-hmm. and you want to come at me and call this a fairy tale book? Oh no, <laughs> no, this ain't a fairy tale book. This is the book of life. It's too much. This is the book of. This is the book that guides my footsteps. This is the book that tells me. How to live my life. This is the book that tells me how to love my wife, how to love my children, how to love difficult people, how to not only just preach and teach, no, but how to live and commune and be a part of this world. We're in this world, but we're not of it. We have a home that's on high. Let me and our something. goal is to get as many people there as possible than it is to just stick around here and just be walling around in this world that's going to eventually die. <laughs> and even even to my wealthy people who got money, come on, I I guarantee you that every principle that you follow, those who don't believe in God, mm-hmm. is in that word. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you, everything how you got what you got mm-hmm. is because you were a giver. You did certain things that the Bible tells us to do, mm-hmm. and you have no idea that it's in there. So if it can't be one part of it true and the whole thing not be true. Right. 
There is too much evidence out here, bro. It's too much. It's too much in our face. The, at this point, what, like, and I'm, I'm with you on certain things, unless I'm, I really, because my question when I get into those debates or people try to debate me, I said, do you really want to hear truth? Mm-hmm. Because if you really want to hear truth, or are you asking me because you think I'm ignorant? Right. <laughs> All right, let's not go there. <laughs> let's not go there. Let's not do this <laughs> because I mean because and and people let me let me say this and even if you haven't been in your word come long on. come on there is a way there are ways that you can um there are ways that you can de- de- um defend the word of God never feel pressure yeah there are books out there a particular book by um and his name is Greg Call. Um, it's a book called Tactics mm-hmm. that talks about how to defend the word, even if you don't know. Because he said something in that particular book. He said, there is always a fly in the oil. Mm-hmm. There is always something if you ask the right questions. But what you have to do is you, you have to keep that person that's asking the questions mm-hmm. in the driver's seat. Yeah. Because eventually at, you'll figure out what they're intent or what their motive is Mm -hmm. and then but you never have to feel pressured to answer someone who's not ready for the truth that's right that's right so that's facts at the end of the day so here we are in this revival mode revival has to take place and it's not your what the it has been traditionalized to to be it is when wherever you go being the church yeah we have to be the church everywhere we go and we have to be able um it's it's a lifestyle that i believe in my heart of hearts after where being where i'm at i believe that because i desire certain things in life mm-hmm my lifestyle aligns up with who Jesus is. Yeah. I have to do certain things. Yeah. In order to achieve certain things. Yeah. And he, I'm not with him because of that, but his way seems like the best and only way to go without there being any type of, um, damage. Yeah. Without there being any type of, um, fly in the oil or different things of that nature where, because if in turn you do it the way Christ, you'll understand that there are certain things that are going to come in life. You're, you're able to bounce back, but you're also able to be an encouragement to everybody. Yeah. You're able to be that encouragement. And, you know, I think you and I both, we always on the same page, bro, (laughs) but we're getting to the point where, we know that we're going to have to take a different type of stance in this revival time, because at the end of the day, um, if in turn people are not afraid to talk about my Jesus and my God, right? Like y'all want to talk bad about them. No, I'm going to talk good about them. Me too. And it's, it is not fair, even though we know what's going to happen. It's not fair that you have a problem with it. Mm Mm-hmm. You got a problem with it. That's your business. Right. They ain't got nothing to do with me. Right. I can't take it because we know that we can't take certain things personal because mm-hmm. of your ignorance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're not going to demonize you because of your ignorance. Right. But we're not going to sit up here and let you talk. Any kind of way. Okay. <laughs> that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Because that's just like you talking to, about uh, somebody in our family. Right. No. Right. Because you you weren't there when mm-hmm. he was. mm you weren't there to see him pull me out. Yeah. And I and the only I had to choose in those moments yeah. to believe that he was real. Yeah. You weren't there. Yeah. And because I trusted to believe that he was there, he hasn't failed me yet. He hasn't failed. Ooh, come on. He hasn't failed me yet. So the more that I lean on him, mm-hmm. even even being a believer and not believing at times, when I got to that place. A rock bottom. Yeah. When my world spiraled upside down, I had to believe in something. Yeah. And he said, just trust me. Yeah. That's what I I kept hearing. Just trust me. Mm -hmm. So as long as I keep trusting him, even when I don't understand it, Mm -hmm. the better I feel about life, the more confident, the more I just take it one step at a time. Yeah. 
One step at a time. One step at a time. Yes. Sir. And so I this question just literally popped in my mind when you was talking. It was like, how do we be the church? Mm. For one, we lead like Christ. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. How did Christ build his church Absolutely. or establish his church? He walked around and he challenged people mm-hmm. to what? Lay down everything you have and follow me. That's it. Now, I'm not saying that we got to walk around and tell people, all right, quick the job and follow me. Right, no. Right, 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 <laughs> no. Right. It's like you have to give up something in order to follow God. And a lot of times it's tied to the thing that is most close to your heart. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that you have to give up your family. I ain't saying that you got to, you know, divorce your wife and your kids and <laughs> <laughs> sell your house and your, all that stuff and follow Jesus. No, it means what are you prioritizing in your life as an idol? Come on. That Jesus wants to take priority of. Mm-hmm. You have to remove that. Nine times out of 10, it's going to be money. Nine times out of 10, it's going to be fame. It's going to be some kind of pride ridden or pride rooted attribute that we, that we have. Mm-hmm. We have to, Separate ourselves from that Mm -hmm. and put on the spirit of God. Come on. Prioritize him. Make him first. Yes, sir. Like you just said, like, how do, how do we, we we're in this, this season of, of revival where this revival starts. It starts in us. Yes, sir. It starts with us. First of all, leading like Christ. Yes, sir. Loving people like Christ. sir. And I think that's the biggest thing that is missing now because you want like even though i yeah i troll the trolls yes (laughs) Mm -hmm. but the biggest thing is that you have to you have to love people right where they're at yes sir and so someone's messed up and all this other stuff like it's i get it but you're not going to talk sideways about god come on you're not going to talk sideways about my savior yes sir but we can talk and have a conversation you can be yourself but I'm gonna correct you, and I'm gonna love you right. in the same way. <laughs> right, right, right. Like it just makes me think about this one opportunity. This one time, I had um, talked to this guy, and he was. Uh, we were. I was with my church, and we were doing this Fourth of July thing. I believe I shared this before, but I don't know. But it was at this Fourth of July thing. We were just walking around. We were talking. Uh, we were just telling people to, you know, about our church, getting them trying to come to church. This one guy, he goes and talks to the police. I guess he was talking to the police about us because he goes and talks to the police. And then he immediately comes and talks to me, mm. and. Immediately, he's he's asking me stupid questions. He's like, "Who is God? What's the G mean? What's the O mean? What the D mean? All these different <laughs> things." And I'm like, "Bro, like, what?" <laughs> <laughs> but he was clearly drunk. Right. He was clearly under right. some kind of influence. And I sat there and I took the time with him. I just talked to him. Mm. And after we talked for a while, I saw like the layers start breaking off. Mm. I challenged him with this one question. I said, "Well, sir, it was like you have a do you have a child?" He said, "Yeah, I have a little daughter." Mm-hmm. He said. Uh, I would do anything for my daughter. I was like, okay. So if if your daughter grew up and turned their back on you and decided not not to love mm-hmm. you anything like that anymore, on, TJ. it's like, would you still love your daughter? It's like, yeah, in the whole wide world. It was like, that's how God's love is for us. Come on, TJ. It's like it don't matter what we do. God still loves us, and He still loves you. And when I said that, that man broke down and started crying. Mm. All of the, the drunkness and everything he was in, that way. man broke down and started crying. Mm-hmm. And I prayed for him. Yes, sir. Now, that was a seed planted because I know we didn't lead him to Christ or nothing like that because he didn't want it. But he felt the presence of God Come in on. that moment. He felt the love of God in that moment. The problem is we want to beat people up with the scripture. Mm-hmm. We want to prove that we're right so much that we, that we forget that it is what? By loving kindness, come on. have I drawn thee? Come on, come on, come on. We forget that. Come on. We think it's all head knowledge and book knowledge. No, it's the love of God that draws people in. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw. We just came out of Easter. Come on. That's the greatest display of love come that on. anyone has ever shown to anyone. Come on. And he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw. Come on. We can't do the drawing on our own. No, <laughs> we can't. No, sir. We need Christ and we need his love. And so the revival has to start in us. How do we be the church? That's how. It starts with us. It starts with our own personal walk. It starts with how we we fast, how we pray, how we really care about what's going on in our own heart. Yes, sir. And what we care about what's going on in the world. Yes, sir. Because this world is dying. Just like you said, there's young people that's dying. There's young people that's dying. There's young people that don't even care about their own lives. Getting in random shootouts for no reason. No reason. And don't care. And don't care. And thinking that their lives are worthless. No, you have a life. 
You, your life is so worth it to God. He has a purpose and a plan. And I tell this to people all the time. No, your purpose and your plan isn't going to be you're going to be a preacher. and all. No, God has a plan for your life. Your life isn't in the streets. On, <laughs> your life isn't in the drugs. It isn't in that type of lifestyle. Your life has a meaning. It has a purpose. And it, you won't be able to understand that or achieve that until you know God. So it, it really sounds like, bro, that we have to somehow, our generation has to overcome this lazy spirit. Mm, yes. We have a lazy spirit where we won't search out the scriptures mm -hmm. we won't because we want instant gratification mm. in every area of our lives and what's happening is the enemy is using that because we have to remember he was with god when god was doing everything mm -hmm. he was one of the angels come on he was right there he was right there he was right there so he's not a new millennial or generational <laughs> z type demon mm -hmm. Things that there, the Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. Under the sun. Because there is nothing new under the sun, that, that means there are also things that it says, and I believe, I, I want to say the book of Deuteronomy. I'm going to have to double check. I'm not going to do it now. Mm -hmm. But in the book of Deuteronomy, where it says there can be attached to you four generations of sins, yeah. of different things that you're dealing with, mm -hmm. that goes back so far. But if you're not talking or searching now, now I know that takes two generations, yeah. you know, and, and I think it's our responsibility, you know, especially, you know, with my daughter, I make sure that I'm very honest with her. Yeah. You know, I'm not graphic, yeah. but I'm very honest because the enemy starts early. He starts way early. He starts early to try to confuse the mind because my daughter's growing up. In a time where two moms are dropping off a child and different mm -hmm. things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And what you do is your business. It's just not something that I believe in. Right. You feel what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because I believe in the word of God. Mm -hmm. I believe in Jesus. I believe that there are certain things that has to happen. So if you're mad, don't be mad at me. Be mad at the word of God. Be mad at God. <laughs> right. Period. <laughs> but it's because there is a standard. Now I have to be honest and say so there are certain things that are going to come. Yeah. The Bible it talks about the three biggest sin, sins are uh, um, um, oh shoot the pride the lust oh, of, yeah, the the flesh, of the flesh pride the, of the heart the uh, yeah the pride of life on um, the lust of the eye no yeah the pride of life the lust of the flesh the um and lust of the eye something like that y'all know what I'm saying we can look it up later anyway <laughs> it's in there it's in there um, but at the end of the day there these are the main things that are attacking us as mm -hmm. a people in mm -hmm. our generation because and all of that when you look at it um all of that has to deal with people really not taking the time to yeah. center themselves yeah and see exactly what's happening in certain moments and in, in time yeah. this is why we you know you and you and myself and those who all call themselves preachers who proclaim the gospel yeah. this is why we have to remain focused mm -hmm. this is why revival has to happen it has to because if in turn people are not this is why we have we assemble together this is why we go to the church meetings yeah. because there are things that you deal with that you need an understanding yeah. about yeah yeah you need clarity about. Yeah. And, and if your heart is not open, just like the gentleman, you even though he came at you in a way, but what I heard was a cry for help. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That was a cry for help. Sometimes people cry sounds a little bit different. It sounds a lot different. And it can be offensive. Mm -hmm. It can be, it can come off in ways that, but if you look, if you're in the place, especially as a believer that you need to be and you're revived, mm -hmm. you can help bring revival. Mm hmm. Then because then in turn, then the churches, the holy temple will fill up. Yeah. Because I need to know the people are gonna be like, I need to know what are you doing? Yeah. So then in turn, now they're following you. Mm -hmm. Follow me as I follow Christ. Mm -hmm. And I'll lead you to the place where we worship, where we praise, where we do all this, where we learn about mm -hmm. what God is saying, yeah. where we're edified as the people of God. This is all what Jesus wanted us to do. Yeah. And nothing it, it doesn't have to be any more, any less, everything else that comes with it, the glitz and the glamour, you know, everything has its place, cool beans. However, I'm longing for that day. Yeah. That when we're all on one accord. Yeah. As the body of Christ. Yeah. 
because a great revival is it's coming. It's coming like never before. And we have to be ready because then we'll we'll never he's the Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor has sea begging bread. So, yes, we're going to have to endure some things, mm -hmm. but we ain't going to be begging out here. Mm -mm. We ain't going to be wanting out here mm -mm. because it's people like us, bro, and people who who have our, is a remnant of us yeah. who are getting hit. Yeah. There's a remnant of us who's going to take, you take the, or what, uh, Jackie Chan said, or Russia, yeah. I go this go way, I go, go that way. way. <laughs> <laughs> type of situation. Right. You feel what I'm saying? So, it's, 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 it's very, but. You have to have the heart to do it, yeah. Because at the end of the at the end of the day, for me, I've learned a lot about myself in this season, yeah. And how tangible things are nice, mm -hmm. but having God, mm -hmm. it's nothing greater. It's nothing greater. And it's so funny because, like, and we'll end, we'll, we'll end on this note because, like, the Lord has really been like. So I, I'm doing my own like little Bible plan, and I'm like. I ain't gonna lie, I'm like 12 days behind. Mm. But <laughs> <laughs> I get caught up this week. But it's like I've been but I've been really like it's it's one of the reasons why it's a struggle for me to read Bible through it because like you like every time I read it, the Lord like give me a word. Uh -huh. just, <laughs> <laughs> start right there. Right, start right I, I just be in it. I haven't been successful <laughs> since 2020, Doc. I have not every time I get to study, I'm like, that is not what I'm right, supposed to be doing. That is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh -huh. Next thing you know, I got a whole sermon right. right. <laughs> Yes, everything sir. but it's funny because like because i've been like stuck in first samuel mm. and just looking at just 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 the whole dynamic between eli his sons and the parallels between samuel and um and david and saul mm. and it's just what's the biggest thing that we see is the height of pride mm. and how that comes before the fall mm -hmm. and then it's what it's a humble person and the humility aspect that really that God loves and that he yearns for. Mm. And so like, if you notice any of my posts, um, people that follow it or, or be a part or whatever, um, like my post recently has been more about humility, mm. more about just centering back on God, because mm. truthfully, I feel in the sphere, in this land that that is what God wants us to do. Mm. He wants us to get back to here. Like, this is our. This is where we're going to know exactly what's going to take place. He wants us to get back to centered on His Word. He wants us to to commune with Him daily. Oh, he wants us to to fellowship with Him daily. Like, I mean, I know some people have bad relationships with their parents, but I mean, if you have a good relationship with your with your parents, it's like you want to talk to your mom and dad every single day. Like, you want to at least let them know that everything is okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same with God. It's like, he wants to spend that time with us. He mm -hmm. wants to, he wants us to humble ourselves, not just be after the chase of everything that's in this life. Because mm -hmm. in this life, it's, it's what? It's, it's nothing. Like, it's, it's a meaningless thing that mm -hmm. we're chasing. But the thing that, that matters the most is 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 our relationship yes sir is is our is is our well-being in god because there's the there's the fullness of joy there's fullness of everything yes sir and that's where we have to really center on like that has really been my heart because it's like i i want to just be a humble peaceful person yes sir and just love god and love people yes sir but it'd be challenging sometimes sometimes because you know people be people Yes, sir. Yes, sir. People be people. People be people. <laughs> right. Yes, people sir. be people. Yes, sir. We're gonna start that. Well, I since we we come into a close, um, I just want to encourage every person that is watching, um, even if you have you're an atheist, I just want to challenge you just to simply open your heart. Mm -hmm. Because whether you believe it or not, the scripture says, and I'm gonna read it, it says in a moment. 1 Corinthians 15, and in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, but the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the corruptible, corruptible must put on incorruption, and this moral must put on immortality. Immor yep. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal, mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying, that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Yes. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Thy sting of death is sin, 
and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which hath given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hmm. He's coming, people. He's coming. It's He's a coming. real thing. It's a real thing. Yes, sir. And 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 God wants us to be unified. Yes, sir. As one body. That's it, bro. That's that's what one faith is. That's like, it. One faith. One faith. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. That's Ephesians four and five. Yes, sir. One body. Yes, sir. Be unified. That's it. That's it. Love y'all. Love y'all, man. Peace. I'll take it easy.